episode two of Inspiring Wonder Down Under in Melbourne. My first stop is the Brotherhood of St. Lawrence in Fitzroy. So here we are at um, Brotherhood of St. Lawrence. And this is the Father Tucker room, um, who has uh, believed in social activism and innovative solutions against poverty. And it's here I'm running my first session for a group of staff delivering an employment programme. This is the Sustainable Livelihoods Ladder. I find this often in my workshops is an effective way for practitioners to think about both the uh, asset journeys of young people and also the organisations they themselves work for and the wider systems and structures around them. Um, what we tend to find is that the focus of practitioners' work is how do you enable young people to move out of just surviving and coping into taking the positive risks required to begin to experience adapting and moving towards a more thriving uh, livelihood. At the same time, very often, some of the policies that determine practitioners' work are actually set up the other way around. So often, you know, certain policies and institutions and systems are more geared around young people at best being able to cope, and that creates a, a tension. Of course, it's, it's kind of important that we don't just see the, the sustainable livelihoods ladder as a linear process that all people move from surviving to thriving. Um, very often young people experience, can experience it, all these things at once. The, the interesting thing for practitioners though is to use this process as a way of reflecting on where young people are and particularly what are the positive risks, what are the engagement tools that young people can experience to help them make progress. Another interesting quality for me about the Sustainable Livelihoods Ladder is it really draws our attention to this question of thriving or the notion that Aristotle would have said about well, what is a good life and how, do we, how can we create it and how do we know when we get there. And certainly we don't often spend enough time thinking about well what are the assets that young people need to be able to experience a thriving life and how will they know when they get there. What criteria do we have for Thrive? Um, do we know how to assess it? I don't think we do. And in fact, when you look at many programs talking about young people becoming independent adults, what's that? Or when they talk about transforming lives, whose life and what is the transformation? We're very often, we're not, very, we're not clear what those things are. So the Sustainable Livelihoods Ladder at least nudges us to be a bit clearer about what is a, a surviving experience, a coping experience, adapting experience and a, and a thriving experience and the different assets that we need to look for and understand across those um, domains. Now for me, Sustainable Livelihoods is not, as I've said, a linear process. It, it seems to me quite clear that young people need to be able to develop the assets to survive to cope, to take the positive risks to adapt and build, and to also know how to experience to thrive, and to be able to draw on all of those over their, their life journeys ahead. And beyond that though, we ourselves need to be clear. We need to have ways to assess those, ways to support those, and ways to look to influence policies and systems and institutions and organisation structures that do not allow those different experiences to occur. I asked the participants at today's workshop what it was they wanted to get out of a session exploring asset-based thinking together. And this is one of the most interesting answers. How to get this star outside of this box? Well, a couple of hours later, I'm not sure we did get the star out of the box, but we certainly got the genie of asset-based thinking very alive in the room. So join me for my next episode as we go in search of FOIA accreditation. <laughs>